Here I have a Ericsson Drew 9E tower mounted antenna power amplifier. Uh, if we take a quick rundown of the front of it, we have the power input, the DCN. We have a, a Y-Link port, which goes to the CPU unit. We have a TX-RX1. And if we come further down, we have TMA Power 2. We have TX-RX2. And there is some different RX out and in ports. I'm not quite sure what a receive in is, but as you can see, this is some small gold plated connectors and does not seem to have been used while this was installed and in duty. The two antenna and inputs and the wire link and the DCN is most likely what was used in this setup. The DC input to this amplifier comes from this unit. It's a 27.2 volt DC, 1520 watt power supply, fit from a single input. Also some alarm sharing connectors and not, not much to say about that. If we take a look at the power amplifier unit itself, as you can see it's rather big. And that is a serious amount of screws to remove before we get to see what's inside. I have uh, some higher hope as to what we can find inside this amplifier as it seems to have no transmit inputs but merely uh, the input from the CPU. So with all the screws removed, and that was quite a lot, we can now remove the cover plate. First thing we could see is the tuning pins at different heights. And what I notice about this is th this is just regular screws. They have rounded surfaces, but uh, not rounded like in absolutely round polished pins like I have seen in the other unit. If we take a look at the nice silver plated cavity, it's very clean, very nice layout. And what we do know is that this is a two channel transmitter and receiver. We can see there is a wall going across here that separates the two parts. I guess it's the receiving part that we have here due to the connectors at the front. We can see that the, the cavities follow through here, all around, and up to the connector for the antenna connector. The other way around, we have this tunnel that goes over here, this feed through goes down through the base plate to the amplifier on the other side and in the top section it's about the same story I think we have received down here goes through this labyrinth goes up to the antenna connector and the transmitting part comes over here from again a feed through that goes back to the amplifier Removing the front cover does not reveal too many secrets except that maybe there is this hidden connector might be some kind of service connector or some of that kind Over here we can see oh, it's a hard, hard to make out but maybe you can see that these uh, four connectors are actually connected to the PCB the same goes over here. The LEDs, push buttons, everything here. We can actually see the PCB by now. But uh, I will have to remove the heatsink on the other side and we will see the amplifier part, I hope.
Okay, so now the heatsink is almost okay. So this. Okay. Now this is a nice looking PCB. At the top we have the DC input connector. The first two components here are fuses. There is a small switch mode power supply controller which controls the four MOSFETs sitting here. It is some kind of intermediate link DC-DC converter. The first little green printed circuit board here is a low voltage power supply. There's a range of electrolytic capacitors. Here we have a very high current inductor, probably for the supply for the LD mass output transistors. At the bottom of the power supply we have another high current supply, I'm not too sure what this is for. Up here we have the Y-Link connector to the CPU unit. First we have some flash RAM, not sure how much size it is. Over here we have 256 megabytes of RAM that is sitting as a part of the Ericsson Tarek X CPU. Over here is a PowerGAP CPU which has 512 megabytes of RAM. I have not been able to localize any data sheets for any of these CPUs. The transmitting amplifier starts with two small shielded circuits, which I think is a link between the CPU data lines and the HDSL analog front end. It's an analog device's 7346A HDSL, which is a high speed, high bit rate digital subscriber line. What it does is that it translates the uh, telecommunications protocol into a analog signal, which continues up through this circuitry into this IC, continues through the tracks here down to the PTF 080901E 90 watt LD mass transistor. The LD mass transistors are mostly just used for RF and microwave circuits, uh, and this is an edge. Um, amplifier and the LDMOS technology simply has too high losses to be used today in today's 3G and 4G networks. If we follow the tracks further down we come over to a Singer XC0900 coupler or splitter which basically is a can be used as an isolator uh, or a splitter of signals or a combiner. Here we can see that we have the input and one output, so it's probably used as, as a uh, isolated splitter. It goes on down into a magnetic output filter, which has two strong magnets in two separate chambers. From here it goes into uh, some very heavily gold-plated uh, RF relays, and there are three of those. And from here, it could either go to the another coupler or splitter or combiner, another Singer 2 XC0900, and it can either go to the TX2 or the TX1 connector. There is also a 20 dB attenuator, which connects down to the splitter. So it seems that somehow it can also measure its own transmitting power.
In the receiving part of the amplifier we have the first RX1 connector and RX2. It seems that the RX2 connector is uh, an uh, unamplified connector which goes maybe directly to one of the outputs here. Whereas the other RX1 input up here goes down to 8887724 sigma delta modulators. These uh, ICs convert a analog signal into a high-speed one-bit data stream. It does seem like there is four lines through the the receiving amplifier here, where we have another four components here, four shielded components, and we have what looks like some kind of combining circuits down here which splits out goes through four filters again and outputs in some kind of ways. There is also the 20 dB attenuator that I mentioned during the transmitting part and I guess this is some kind of feedback that goes up through here maybe to the CPU maybe to some of the receiving amplifiers. To give a recap of how the data flow is in the amplifier, I would like to just show very quick how I think it goes. It starts by entering the wiring port. We go down through the CPU, which goes over to the start of the transmitting circuit. Here the digital subscriber line signal is converted into an analog signal, which is fed through analog circuitry which is fed through some minor amplifiers over to the big power LDMOS transistor. It is then again fed through a isolating coupler, which is put into the output filter and either to the output to the antenna or through up here to the attenuator to measure the data back into the system. The same goes for the other channel comes over here through the first circuitry down to the HDSL to analog converter up here to the first amplifier IC over here to the power LDMOS transistor goes down through the coupler to the output filter to another relay where it can go to the transmitting antenna. The uh, splitter or coupler here can also couple this over through the bigger relay to the other antenna part. The receiving part had the two receiving connectors from the uh, cavities. One which goes directly to the connectors here and the other which connects down to these um, AD7724 analog to one bit data stream converters converts into four lines of data which then again goes on into the shielded circuitry is then again maybe combined or split it down here comes out through another four lines which seems to split out into two connectors